Hello and welcome to my first tutorial of a peacock cane. Here you can see the first one that I did last year. And I'm going to be making it more round this time. And I'm going to show you a brief glimpse of the colors I'm going to use. We have peacock blue. We have a gold that is a mix between the two Primo Sculpey golds. And we have these two greens which have a bit of gold in them. And then we have a pink that has some green in it to dull it, so it's not quite as bright as the first time that I made the cane. And we're going to start with a very dark midnight blue. Take the midnight blue and roll it into a cylinder shape. And once you have the cylinder about where you want it, we'll start to make that dent shape that you can see in the picture. You can do it a few ways. You can use a needle tool to push it into shape, or you can use a cutting tool to cut that portion out and I'm going to soften the edges a bit with my fingers, the work surface, and the needle tool. And once I have the shape where I want it, we are going to add the turquoise blue into the middle. So take the turquoise blue and roll it into a very thin, small cylinder shape, and it's going to fit right into the, the shape. You can trim it if it's not quite the right size that you want. And once you have it where you want it, then roll it in. Every so often I like to clean my hands with some scrap clay and also clean the work surface off of any clay debris. And now that I've done that, we're going to start on the turquoise shape. So first you're going to be rolling another cylinder, a little fatter this time. And if you ever get any clay debris on it, just kind of shave it off with a little blade. And once you have the shape that you want, you're going to use the cutting tool again to make it into a crescent shape. And you're going to take your first shape and it's going to fit right into the crescent. At this point in the recording, you will see I made it a bit short. When you use the cutting tool, it compresses the shape a bit, but I will use the remainder of the clay to doctor the shape and fix my error. You don't have to worry if you end up making things a bit too short, usually there's a simple solution and at the end of the day it will look just fine as long as you get the shapes to match each other before you continue on. I'm going to make sure that I try to smooth out the crease as much as possible to give it a nice uniform shape so that there's no distortion when you're cutting into the cane later. And once again, when you are done, roll the shape to get everything sticking together nicely. And after we have completed this step, we are going to enclose it into the blue. So place the blue sheet along the bottom edge and try to keep it as straight as you can and then lay it down and then slowly roll the shape. And once you get to the end, push lightly and create a crease. And where that crease is, is where you're going to cut to make the ends even when you close the sheet onto itself. And then you can trim the edges to keep them even. And you have enclosed your shape. Once again, roll the shape to get everything sticking together. And very lightly, if you have any debris, such as dust or hair, take your blade and gently remove it. All right, you can see we've got the middle shape all done. And after that, we're going to add the gold. So I'm going to take my gold and I'm going to make a triangle shape. And I am going to make sure that the bottom edges are fairly thin. If you have any trouble taking the shape off, you can use your X-Acto knife to scrape underneath it. 
And once you have that rough sea slug-like shape, you can place it on top right above the midnight blue. You can use your fingers or a shaping tool to push the edges down and blend them with the blue. And I always like to clean the edges off and conserve what clay that I can as I'm working. And once you're done with that, you will take a sheet of gold and repeat the process we did with the blue shape, starting at the top this time and rolling it around. You can already see it's too short, but I will be correcting that just as I did with the other shape. And because the edges are so straight, it's going to be much easier this time. I do use a pasta machine to make these sheets. However, my pasta machine is attached to a bench in another room where the lighting is terrible, so I didn't include that in the recording. And generally speaking, I do not make them ahead of time as I did for this video. I usually make them as I go, so I can determine the exact width that I need them to be before running them through the machine. And that is actually what I'm talking about in the video at normal speed, where if you roll the cylinder into the right shape, you can put it in the pasta machine and it will be the right width. Always check your shape to make sure that things are progressing properly. And when you are rolling a shape that is not round, be very careful not to distort it as you are pressing down upon it. Now we're going to be taking the green and adding that layer fairly straightforward. I'll be using what I have left to finish up the shape. Any small creases or holes that you have will need to be filled. Otherwise, when you cut the cane, you might end up with gaps or pieces that don't look as good. Once again, roll the shape, being very careful not to distort it. If you're not comfortable with rolling it, you can always just push on it with your hands, being very careful to be even with the amount of pressure that you give to each spot and always pause to clean it. Make sure you don't trap a bunch of dust and hair in between the pieces. I can tell you if you do that, when you cut the canes into smaller shapes, if there is hair, it will mess it up. Now we're going to be moving on to the pink. It's not quite the right width, so I'm going to end up having to do it lengthwise and cutting it a few times. Just putting it on the very top. Cut very lightly so that you don't score the green too deeply. And trim the excess. Now that we have our pink on the top, all we have to do is blend it onto the bottom so that there is a nice progression from pink to green. And if you're going to be layering these on a tail of a peacock, you can stop here or you can choose to add the darker green on top. I'm going to choose the darker green on top since I am making the feather itself. Once again, press slowly and evenly as you enclose your shape and make the crease so that you know where to cut. Press the two pieces together as closely as you can and trim the excess. That's all there is to the colors, and now we just have to press them together and reduce the shape to the size that we want. I'm going to make a cut with a tissue blade so that I can show you what it looks like inside. And as you can see, the shape is much more even on the inside than it is on the two ends. And I'm going to take this small bit and I'm going to squish it down into a smaller cane. I have to go very slowly at first just to make sure that I don't distort the shape 
it's a little too thin to be rolling it without risk of having it fall or squish. So it's best to, at this stage, use your fingers and just slowly move around the shape, making sure to keep it in the desired position. Patience is key at this stage. You don't want to press too hard or go too fast and distort your shape, especially if you are not used to reducing your cane. It will benefit you to go slowly. And once we get the cane reduced enough to where it is starting to get noticeably longer, you'll notice that the edges have distorted, especially near the top. And this is because you are pressing more often on the top than you are on the bottom in order to preserve the avocado shape of the feather. And this is completely normal if you have this distortion. Once you have it at a certain size that you're comfortable with, you can begin to roll it or press it against the table, your work surface, rather than just using your hands. Continue to occasionally check your shape as you are rolling, just to make sure that it stays. And I will be cutting it to show you that the shape has been preserved. And now you have two sizes of peacock feathers.